What's up, Sketchy Crew? I'm Sketchy Medic, firefighter, paramedic, and your new ride-along for surviving EMT school, smashing the NREMT, and actually remembering what you learn. If you're into EMT hacks, sketch-style breakdowns, and making this stuff stick, like this video and subscribe to the channel. Let's make learning fun, visual, and sticky, one sketch at a time. Today, we're diving into Chapter 5, The Human Body. Because if you don't understand how the body works, how are you going to fix it when it breaks? We're talking anatomy, physiology, electrical systems, muscles, bones, and all the sketchy stuff in between. So, whether you're cramming for your next quiz or just trying to make sense, you're in the right place. Let's break down a fancy word that sounds more intimidating than it is. Anatomy. That's right. Anatomy is just the study of the human body's structure. From your brain to your pinky toe, it's all the parts that make you you. Bones, muscles, organs, blood vessels. If it's in your body and has a name, it's anatomy. We covered anatomy, the parts of the body. Now let's talk about what those parts actually do. Welcome to physiology. Physiology is the study of how the body works, like how your heart pumps blood, how your lungs swap out oxygen, and how your brain decides it's snack time, again. Think of the body like a machine. Anatomy is the hardware. But physiology? That's the software running. Welcome to pathophysiology. Sounds scary? Good. Because pathophysiology is what happens when the body goes wrong. It's the study of how disease or injury messes with normal function. When your heart should be pumping like a champ, but it's barely squeezing. When your lungs should be trading oxygen like pros, but they're slacking off. That's patho in action. Time to slice the body like a science samurai. Let's talk about the planes of the body. These planes help EMTs describe injuries, movements, and where the hurt is happening. No more, uh, somewhere over here. Now it's laceration, anterior chest, left of midline. Bam, you sound pro. Respect the planes, know your cuts, and always slice with style, medically speaking. Ever wonder how your body goes from tiny invisible cells to a full-on life-saving machine? Let's break it down. Cells to systems. First up, the cell, the basic unit of life. It's like the Lego brick of the body. Next, tissues. Group a bunch of similar cells and boom, now you've got muscle, nerve, or skin. Stack those tissues together and you get organs. Let's talk about the skeletal system. You've got 206 bones in your adult body. That's right. You're basically a walking, talking skeleton. Bones aren't just there to keep you from being a puddle of goo. They do way more. Your bones are the framework. Rib cage, Fort Knox for your heart and lungs. Bone marrow makes red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. And you can't move without it. Welcome to the axial skeleton, the core framework that keeps you upright and protects your vital gear. Skull, 22 bones of pure protection and personality. Vertebral column, a.k.a. the spine, 26 bones stacked like Jenga. Spinal breakdown, cervical 7, thoracic 12, lumbar and sacrum and coccyx. Think breakfast at 7, lunch at 12, and dinner at 5. Lastly, your armor, the rib cage. If the axial skeleton is your body's central frame, then the appendicular skeleton is your mobility team. Upper limbs, that's your arms, baby. Pectoral girdle, a.k.a. the shoulder support system. Lower limbs, all the power for running into scenes and squatting with patients. Pelvic girdle, the bony belt holding it all together. The appendicular skeleton is the action squad of your body. Think your skeleton's just a bunch of bones holding you up? Wrong. These bones are busy. Support and structure. Your bones equals the body's scaffolding. Protection. Bones are like security guards for your organs. Blood cell production. Inside some bones is red bone marrow. The factory for red blood cells carry oxygen. White blood cells fight infection. Platelets help you clot. Musculoskeletal system, your body's frame and engine all in one. Let's break down the anatomy that helps you move, lift, and save lives. Skeletal system, the frame. Bones are split into two main categories. Axial skeleton, skull, spine, ribs, your body's core support beam. Appendicular skeleton, arms, legs, shoulders, hips. Let's flex our brains for a minute and talk about the muscular system, the powerhouse behind every move you make. Your body has over 600 muscles, 
Skeletal muscles, these are the big movers. They attach to bones, give you strength, posture, and movement. Voluntary muscles, you control them. Cardiac muscle, only found in your heart. Smooth muscle, found in places like your intestines and blood vessels. Let's break down the physiology of the musculoskeletal system. Our muscular system and skeletal system team up to create movement, stability, and strength. Skeletal muscles attach to bones with tough connective tissue called tendons. That contraction pulls the bone, movement achieved. Oh, and calcium? It's not just for teeth. Your bones store it and release it as needed to keep your muscles healthy. The upper airway is all about prepping the air before it hits the lungs. Nose and nasal cavity, this is your primary entry point. Tiny hairs called cilia trap dust and germs. Mouth, backup entrance, less filtering than the nose. Pharynx, a shared hallway for air and food. Larynx, aka the voice box. Upper airway, air prep, protection, and pathway. Welcome to the lower airway, where the real oxygen hustle begins. Once air passes through the larynx, that's your voice box, it hits the trachea. The trachea bifurcates fancy word for splits into the right and left mainstem bronchi. From there, it branches into bronchioles. At the end of the line, alveoli, the real MVPs of respiration where the gas exchange goes down. Oxygen hops in, CO2 hops out. Your lungs are the main organs of respiration. You've got two lungs right and left. The right lung has three lobes, upper, middle, lower. The left lung only has two lobes because your heart called dibs on space. Every time you inhale, air travels down the trachea, splits into bronchi, and flows through the bronchioles into the alveoli, who controls this? Your brainstem, the medulla oblongata. We breathe because our bodies need oxygen to make energy. Every cell in your body runs on ATP, the energy currency made during cellular respiration. But there's a twist. Your brain doesn't breathe because of low oxygen. It breathes because of high carbon dioxide. We breathe to bring in oxygen for energy and to dump CO2 before it builds up and gets toxic. That's the cycle. That's the rhythm. Before you can spot a breathing emergency, you got to know what normal breathing actually looks like. Normal adults breathe 12 to 20 times per minute. Smooth and regular. Not gasping, not fighting for air. Each breath should be adequate. Chest visibly rising and falling. Effort. There shouldn't be any. No belly breathing, retractions, or accessory muscle use. Patient looks relaxed. Just because someone's breathing doesn't mean it's good breathing. Let's talk about inadequate breathing. It's when air is moving, but it's not enough to support life. That means not enough oxygen in, not enough carbon dioxide out, body still crashing. Rate too fast, too slow. Rhythm, is it irregular, gasping, or agonal? Depth, shallow chest rise, barely moving air. Your job as an EMT, recognize it. Let's dive into the circulatory system, anatomy, where every beat counts and every vessel has a mission. Think of it like the body's transport highway moving oxygen, nutrients, and waste to exactly where they need to go. The heart, the power pump, blood vessels, the road system, arteries, blood away from the heart, veins, blood to the heart, capillaries, tiny exchange stations, pumps, pipe, product, the heart, the 24-7, no days off, four-chambered muscle, keeping you and your patients alive. Right in the thoracic cavity, just a little left of center, behind the sternum. Protected by ribs and wrapped in the pericardium, a double-layered sac that keeps things smooth and friction-free. Heart rate HR, aka how fast the heart beats, normal resting range, 60 to 100 beats per minute. Anything faster, that's tachycardia. Too slow, that's bradycardia. 2. Stroke volume, SV. The amount of blood pumped out with each beat, usually about 70 milliliters per beat in an average adult. Cardiac output, CO, the total blood volume pumped in one minute. Why does it matter? Low cardiac output equals shock. We're touring the circulation of the heart, and trust me, this route matters. Blood returns to the heart from the body, and it's low on oxygen. It enters the right atrium via two major veins, superior vena cava from the upper body, inferior vena cava from the lower body. Oxygenated blood returns from the lungs. Now oxygen-rich, blood comes back into the left atrium, the only veins carrying oxygen. Let's break down the electrical system of the heart. It all starts with the SA node, 
the sinoatrial node, located in the right atrium. This is your natural pacemaker. It drops the beat at 60 to 100 BPM. Signal travels down to the AV node, the atrioventricular node. It sits at the junction between the atria and ventricles. This node slows things down. Then the bundles in Purkinje deliver the charge. Four chambers, no waiting, right atrium, receives deoxygenated blood from the body via the vena cava. Right ventricle pumps that blood to the lungs via the pulmonary artery for a fresh O2 refill. Left atrium takes in oxygen-rich blood from the lungs. Left ventricle pumps it out to the entire body through the aorta with massive pressure. Bonus, that left ventricle is the strongest. Blood flows in one direction only thanks to four valves, tricuspid, pulmonary, mitral, aortic. These are your one-way doors, keeping everything flowing forward. The valves, four flap-like bosses that keep blood moving forward, no U-turns allowed. The heart has four valves, each with a job. One, tricuspid valve. Two, pulmonary valve. Three, mitral valve. Four, aortic valve. If any valve fails, you get backflow, pressure buildup, decreased perfusion. Remember this order. Tricuspid, pulmonary, mitral, aortic to right to lungs to left to body. And just when you thought you had it all figured out, we're only just getting started. More anatomy, more sketchiness, more life-saving knowledge coming soon. So hit that like, smash subscribe, and stay tuned, because this journey through the human body, it's far from over. To be continued, stay curious, stay sketchy, and I'll see you in the next one.